Hi, learners. Welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss about a few basic properties of gases. So gases behavior is entirely different. We know three different states of matter, solids, liquids, and gas. Solids have fixed mass. Okay, they have fixed shape. They, okay, that is entirely different from liquids. Liquids also having mass, uh, volume. They will be occupying. They don't have fixed shape. They will be occupying the uh, where you are where you place that liquid in that particular container. So shape of the container. Coming to the gases, gases can occupy the total volume which is available for it. For example, if I place uh, an hydrogen gas in uh, one cubic centimeter volume uh, vessel, then it will occupy this space. The same thing if I gave a space of 1000 cubic centimeters, then also it will occupy. Okay, if I leave that in a whole room, so it will also occupy the whole room. That means what they, whatever the space available, generally gases occupy that whole space. Coming to the measurable properties, what kind of uh, properties of gases can be measurable? That's our uh, topic, today's topic. So that I'm going to discuss about five properties. Students. Let us see what are those five properties. First one is mass. So mass of the gas is measurable. How we will uh, measure that, we'll see now. Next is volume of gas, how to measure volume of gas. And third one is temperature. Temperature. Okay. And fourth one is pressure. And fifth one is density. So these are the five measurable properties that we are going to discuss under the gaseous state, okay? Basics in gaseous state. Coming to the first one, that is mass of a gas. How to measure mass of the gas? Just like uh, solids, we can't measure. So then what you have to do, you have to measure the NT, mass of the NT container. Let us say this is W1 grams, empty container. And after completely filled, so always we are talking about a closed system here. So then you just measure with gas, what is the weight? So that is W2 grams. So the mass of the gas becomes now, mass of gas is equal to W2 minus W1 grams. So generally mass of the gas we used to measure in grams students. Furthermore, mass of the gas concept we use to determine number of moles also. Okay, so how to measure number of moles? So where we use this concept, to measure number of moles also, we use this one. So number of moles is equal to, so mass of the gas. So whatever the mass we got, mass of the gas over its molecular mass or molar mass, you can say. If you take this ratio, this formula, we can calculate number of moles that are present in a particular container. So do you understand now, mass of the gas is not measurable directly. Only thing is you have to take the closed container and you measure the um, mass of the empty container. And then after uh, filling a gas into that uh, container, you just weigh that and take the weight of um, container with gas minus empty container. That will give you the mass of the gas. With the help of mass of the gas, we are also going to determine number of moles. Okay, students. So. In that way, we can calculate mass of the gas, that we can measure it. Coming to the volume. So how I, just now I told you, volume means, so it will occupy the total space available to it. See, for example, uh, we are uh, using hydrogen, uh, we are filling hydrogen and nitrogen gases in a container of uh, 1000 cubic centimeters, okay? So here, uh, the condition is, these gases, whatever we are filling in the same container is, um, non react they are not reacting together okay so they are not reacting together then we can say that here just like uh, um, uh, other uh, solids and liquids they don't occupy half of space hydrogen and half of space nitrogen the total volume of uh, hydrogen occupied volume of hydrogen occupied will be equal to 1000 centimeter cube and the volume of nitrogen occupied will be 1000 centimeter cube this you are going to read under the uh, law is Dalton's law. Okay, students. So where it explains how it will occupy. So whatever the total space available, hydrogen will also use the whole space and nitrogen will also use the whole space. Similarly, if I add one more gas to the same cylinder like oxygen, 
they will also occupy the whole space. That means what? So in any container, if you want to measure what is the volume of the gas, that will be equal to the volume of the container. So that is equal into the volume of the container. So volume of gas is equal to volume of container. And if there are more than one gases also, you have to take individually, you should give the whole volume to each gas. Okay, volume of gas is equal to volume of container. And one more thing here, if this is an empty container, then we are talking about this one, okay? If it is occupied, um, so half of the space is occupied with some solid rocks, let us say. Then uh, they can't, uh, gases can't travel through the solid, I mean, uh, rocks. So um, they can only occupy the available space. Okay, if the same condition. So we have thousand centimeter cube, linda here. And here it is occupied with some um, rocks. Okay. And we have it only available 800 centimeter of space. So now the gas is, what is the volume of gases occupied in this case is only 800 because this rest of the space is occupied with 200 centimeter cube is occupied with rocks, solid substance. So in such cases, definitely how to consider the empty space only. Always remember the available empty space, uh, whatever is there, the whole space will be occupied with the gases. Okay, we need to have an empty space. This is an empty space. So that's why it will occupy that space. Okay, students. So in that way, we can measure always a volume in um, uh, empty space of the volume. Here, I will give you a simple relation um, to measure the volumes. I mean, units, different units we got. You have to know all the relations between them. So one meter cube, one meter cube is equal to thousand liters. Okay, one meter cube empty space if you take that will be equal into thousand liters, or you can say thousand. Okay, and similarly, one more relation one liter is equal to we know thousand ml that equal to thousand centimeter. Okay, students, so these relations you have to remember because in the future classes we are going to discuss about uh, different laws, basic laws in gaseous state like Avogadro's. Okay, yeah, let's try, um, ideally I have a question. Where, wherever you got problems, you need to remember that how to convert the units in liters into milliliters, into centimeters. So, all these things. Okay, so that's all about the volume of the gas, how to measure this. Okay, just measure the empty space of the volume, I mean empty space of the container that will be equal to the volume of the gases occupied. And if they if gave you in terms of liters or milliliters or meter cube, you can convert into required units. So generally we used to take them in meters, remember meter cube. Okay, as a units. Next, so volume of the gases is that. Now let us see the third one. What is the third property? Third property, measurable property is temperature. So coming to the temperature, temperature of the gases is nothing but when you heat a gas, okay? So the, they will take up the temperature heat and they will move continuously. That means in terms we can say temperature is nothing but kinetic energy of gases. That means that energy they are using to move. So moving energy is said to be kinetic energy. So kinetic energy of the gases is nothing but the temperature given to so it will is equivalent. And the temperature is generally measured in Kelvins. Always we used to measure temperature in Kelvins. This is SI unit. Okay, so you know in centigrades also, what is the relation? Let us see the relation. Kelvins is equal to centigrade plus 270. So zero Kelvin means uh, 270 degree centigrade. Okay, so if they say 23 Kelvins, then you, uh, 27 Kelvin. How to convert into centigrade? So centigrade is 27 degree centigrade. How to Kelvin, uh, convert into Kelvins? Kelvins is equal to 27 plus 270. That is equal to 300 Kelvins. Similarly, we, if they gave you in foreign heat also, you should understand how to convert it. So foreign heat is, is minus 32 over nine, that is equal to centigrade over. 
So the relation between foreign heat and centigrade. This is the relation between Kelvin and centigrade, foreign heat and centigrade. But remember, always we used to take the temperature in Kelvin. If they gave in a foreign heat, first convert into centigrade, then convert into Kelvin. So we have to report the temperature. In most of the problems, we use Kelvins only. Dear students, so here, uh, that's all about the temperature. So whatever the heat temperature that you have given heat energy will be equal as to move the gases. That's why in terms of, uh, in turn, we can say temperature is nothing but kinetic energy of the gas. Now let us see the fourth one, so is pressure. Fourth property, measurable property, so we can measure the pressure of the gases also. So pressure of the gases is nothing but when the, you apply pressure, generally how the pressure will develop. So it, um, the gaseous molecule is to collide with each other or the walls of the containers, okay? So due to collision of the molecules with other, one another and with the wall of the container, generally pressure will be developed. So pressure is always generally measured in uh, pascals or atmospheres, okay? So um, pressure is equal to force applied generally over area, okay? So coming to the units of this one, force applied means I told you when they uh, hit the wall of surfaces, so that is the force acting and the area available. So we'll be giving units is equal to uh, newtons. Force is measured in newtons over area is measured in meters. So that is nothing but pascals. So what units we are using to measure pressure is pascal. But in general, in problems, we don't use pascal. Instead, we use uh, atmosphere pressure. So what is the relation between one atmosphere pressure so the Pascal is equal to 1.01325 times 10 power 5 Pascals, okay? So if they gave you in Pascals, you have to convert them into atmospheric pressure. Similarly, if it is written in kilopascals, it becomes 101.325 kilopascals. And similarly, in terms of uh, milli millimeters of mercury, when atmosphere pressure is equal to when atmosphere pressure is equal to 760 mm of mercury or 76 centimeters of mercury. Okay, so these are all the units that generally you, know, you need to know the conversions of pressure. So in this way, this pressure is also one of the measurable property. We, these are the units for various units that are available that we use um, to measure pressure and to solve problems. Now let us see the last one, that is density. Density of the um, gas is also measurable. So we know the formula, density is equal to mass over volume. So we know mass, how to measure. And here coming to the density, we have two types of densities. Okay, what are those two types? One is vapor density. The other is absolute density. So vapor density will be measured very easily, molar mass over two, molar mass over two. That means it doesn't have any particular unit. It's a comparison. So used to compare with the hydrogen uh, volume and uh, Generally, we determine based on comparison heads. So that's why it is a ratio. It doesn't have any unit. Whereas the absolute density is measured with the help of a formula that is density is equal to Pm by R. Okay. So where P is the pressure of the gas and is molar mass or is gaseous constant, T is temperature. And you know how the units will be. Okay. So pressure is always taken in um, atmospheres, mass and um, gaseous constant is taken in atmosphere liters per mole per Kelvin. So and temperature is in Kelvins. So here R is equal to gaseous constant. It has to be taken in the form of 0, 8, 2, 1 atmospheres liters per mole per Kelvin. Okay, so in this, uh, units we have to represent R value. Temperature is taken in Kelvin. Okay, mass is taken in grams. Pressure is taken in atmospheres. 
So mass means um, again density over volume. Okay. So it atmospheres. Sorry, students. So in this way, these are the five measurable units that we can um, calculate whenever we talk about gases. So we should know how to determine these five measurable properties. Based on these, we have few certain um, basic laws that we will discuss in the next session. Hope this uh, in this session we discussed completely how to measure what kind of units we are using, what are the relations, what are the other conversions. Okay, so these will definitely will help you to solve few basic problems. So next I will continue with the few basic laws in gaseous state in the next session. Thank you all. Hope it will helpful for you. All the best.